So America from its conception, as I've seen, has been identified with Babylon because of the goddess Columbia who was modeled after the goddess Europa, a woman you would see riding a bull. Um, you see this at the um, building where um, the European Union has all of their offices and everything housed. And as I said, all of these false gods, these false female deities trace back to Nimrod's wife. She took over the mystery religion of Babylon and a lot of the um, rituals and whether it's Halloween, whether it's Christmas, whether it's Easter comes from what it is she um, installed after the death of her husband. So this tells me that at the time that the tower fell, um, I believe that Nimrod had already been dead or um, I'm not, you know, there's so many different um, folklores concerning what really happened. And the Bible just speaks of him and then it speaks of the people wanting to build this tower. The people said, let us build us a tower so that we won't be separated. It doesn't say why they thought that they were going to be separated. It could have something to do with the fact that Nimrod had died or had been killed. Some say that he was um, killed by Shem um, or, or was it our Foxad? which I think is Shem's grandson or something like that. Um, some say that the wife, you know, set it up, that she had her priests to um, do it. Who knows? It could, have be, could be all of the above because she could have been behind the setup and then the priest could have um, had him do it and then discarded of his body and then our facts had who they say refused, Jewish, Jewish um, tradition says they re that he refused to build, to um, help build the Tower of Babel, that he, and, and so that the Lord allowed him to retain and, re and allowed his um, descendants to retain the original language, which is Hebrew. We know that they speak Hebrew in heaven, and we believe that um, Adam and Enoch and all these people also spoke um, Hebrew. There's a book supposedly written by Seth that was in India hundreds or thousands of years ago and they said that it was written in Hebrew and it's not sure or it's not certain whether that was actually um, a book written by Seth or by Enoch. As I said, they have t turned history upside down and the Lord says when he comes he's going to set all things in order so I really hope that he just kind of sits us down for a true <laughs> true history lesson to let us really know what's really good and what really went on because it's almost hard to teach because in teaching we have to rely on books and when translators have mistranslated certain things by mistake um, just because of lack of understanding or wisdom and in, in some cases certain things it doesn't even make sense it doesn't make sense that they added nor the sun into the scriptures of in Matthew, whatever the case may be, where it says no man knows a day. That nor the sun was added. It doesn't make sense that they translate um, the pale horse as pale rather than green when everywhere else in the Bible it's translated as, that word is translated as green. And, you know, the excuse is, well, you know, there's no such thing as a green horse. So the rules is that you translate it a certain way that makes sense. Well, then why did they translate the red horse red rather than saying brown or reddish brown, you know? And that just can get us into so many different topics, but I'm just using that as an example of how it's, you know, when I come forth to teach, you know, I have a lot of information, but it's always, um, I like to be very accurate and it's um, sometimes a little difficult because the history books and everything has been, have been changed, you know, and um, so it's like, you know, you have to, be, it's a little bit, it, it's been changed, but what I believe in regards to the situation with Nimrod is that he was dead, and that's why they feared that they would, um, you know, be separated. I'm not exactly sure about that. I know that when the tower fell, God confused the languages, and they were not allowed able to speak each other's languages, and then they were dispersed. So when you see the traditions of the Druids, up in Europe, of the people who worship the Orishas in Africa, the people um, in India with all their religious groups, people all over the world from different different ethnic groups. You can go back thousands of years even to China and places like that, and you see, you see uh, um, something that is constant, which is this false trinity. Um, 
of the father, the, 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 the husband, the wife, and the child. You see it in Egypt with Isis, Horus, and Seth. You see it in um, in other places with different names where, where the, 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 the son character is called Apollo in certain places. And um, then the father is Zeus, and I guess the mother is Hera or whomever. I don't even like to say these names because they love attention, and, and the Bible says that we are not to call upon the names of other gods, but I'm not calling upon them in the sense of worship. I'm just, you know, trying to educate you. And a lot of you probably know these things. But the point is you see a trinity, and there's a false trinity, and that whole idea of Nimrod being reborn, and that the child being the being God in the flesh, being at the same time the Son of God, is something that Semiramis learned from the enemy. She learned from fallen angels. I believe that she really thought that she was the Queen of Heaven. I believe that she was impregnated by a fallen angel, which could have been Lucifer himself or some other fallen angel, perhaps the one that they know that the Bible calls Apollyon, um, you know, the beast from the bottomless pit and everything like that and so you know perhaps that bloodline is a real bloodline that um came on down i know that there is a woman who is in the in the nephilim mothers program with doug riggs who is the daughter of the woman who was a queen of greece now when i go to wikipedia it doesn't seem that this daughter is mentioned but she says that she you know her blood she was impregnated by a fallen angel and her bloodlines go all the way back to nimrod that means it would have to come through Tammuz, as far as I would understand. But of course, with all the pagan um, rituals and things, he may have had children by the other prostitutes in the temple or something like that. And of course, a lot of those children would have probably have been sacrificed to these false gods or whatever the case may be. And um, um, for her to be coming through the royal lineage of the Queen of Greece, I would think that she goes back, her bloodline would go back to Tammuz which was the son of Semiramis. And so the point is, Semiramis would have had to have had this child already at the time that the Tower of Babel fell and the language was confused. And we know that she did not have this child until after Nimrod was dead. So this is why when they spread out, they brought up all these different religions and then all these different, um, you know, paganism and shamanism, etc. And they had different names for this, this quote-unquote goddess, but these goddesses were really just depictions of Samaritans. I've told them this before. I know many of you already know this, um, but I just wanted to refresh your memory and to sort of go back and to reteach because that is a fact that the brain, once you hear a lie, you have to hear the truth 13 times in order for the physical brain to cancel out the lie. And because we are being bombarded with so many lies on a daily basis for thousands of years, it is never a bad thing to repeat good things. Amen. And so when you see Columbia, when you see all these different um, quote-unquote goddesses, it's really going back to Samiramis, the quote-unquote girl who ran the world because, as I said, after Nimrod was gone, I believe that she, the people, she had the people to build that tower. And it is even historical fact that she built other cities and she ran um, pretty much Babylon in the place of her husband, whom she may have even had killed. Um, and so, when you when you look at all of that, you see that how it how it ties in with she's pretty much the whore of Babylon. You know, she was an actual whore. You know, she did all sorts of sexual things for favors. You know, from the fallen angels and from whatever men. You know, if she did set her husband up, she had to get some man to kind of help her to do it. You know, and um, even being with her husband was was for the wealth and for the fame and for the, you know everything like that and so she is really when you think of the whore of Babylon it is that spirit of Samaritan which we usually call the Jezebel spirit um, and it is a spirit that rules in this country as I said you know from its inception this country has been identified with the whore of Babylon Colombia riding the armadillo which is the daughter of the European <laughs> depiction of Babylon, which was Europa riding a bull. That's why they named it Europe. And then Europa goes back, of course, to um, Diana. And then Diana goes back, because if you're going to go back to um, 
Greece, then it's going to go back to Athena. If you're going to go back to from Greece to Persia, it's going to go to Easter. If you're going to go from Persia to Egypt, it's going to go to Isis. And if you're going to go from Egypt back to Assyria, then um, I believe it's once again Easter, which they call it a star tale, whatever the case, which we pronounce a star tale, but it's Easter and everything like that. And then, or, um, and you know, and it goes back to, as I said, um, Samiramis. And so, this is just even an example of how names change and cultures change and um, things are restructured and, and just redone and rehashed and history repeats itself. And so that's what, they're, that's what this word is about. It's about the restructuring of the world. It's about the, the, the world being restructured once again, um, what they call the New World Order, but it is really neo Babylonianism. It is the rebuilding, the restructuring of Babylon. They are once again saying, let us all come together and strengthen ourselves against God to keep him from separating us or from, to keep him from scattering us, destroying us. Um, you know, let's, let's get strength in numbers so let's come together so that we will be able to stand against God because we have the power, because we are gods and of ourselves and we have free will and we should be able to decide what's right and wrong for us. You know, believe in the lie of the enemy. Oh, you can decide what's right in your own eyes. You know, oh, he just doesn't want you to have knowledge because then once you have knowledge, you will be God's deciding or choosing good and evil, choosing what you find good for you and what you find evil for you. The stupidity in that is that people have opinions and what you might find okay, someone else might not find okay. Some people may find it okay to murder young people. Some people think that that's atrocious. Yet even in the Bible, Mary was a teenager. God himself made it so that boys produce a certain amount of sperm at around 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, around 12 to 14 years old. And girls are able to give, they begin to have their period and are able to carry a child even earlier than that, I would say between 10 to 12 years old. I know girls who have had babies at 13 years old, at girls who have gotten pregnant at 12 years old. Why did God make the body that way? For someone to say, oh, you got to be 30. You know, is the mind mature? No, this is why usually in ancient cultures, even in Israel, a lot of the times, um, girls' minds mature more than boys. So they would get married, you know, between, oh, 13 to 16, and the boys would be a little older. Perhaps 16 to 18 or something like that, perhaps even younger. And, of course, but in those days, they were trained up and prepared to be a husband. They were trained up and prepared to be a wife. That's why they have bar mitzvahs. That's, what is it, 12 or 13. This is why Jesus said at, at 12 years old, he was about his father's business. You know, it was all the fulfillment of prophecy. It was all the fulfillment of um, laws, according to the Bible. But see, now we don't do things that way. Some people um, really don't think that there's any place for black people in ballet. So how is it that we are going to just decide what's right for us? You know, I'm just giving you small examples. How are we going to decide what's right for us? How is it that people are so fooled that they think that they in and of themselves can just be God? It's a deception. And of course, there's going to always be a hierarchy. And someone's going to always have to rule over the majority by force, by fear, by violence in order to maintain their elite status. And then those people will be the people who will make the rules and the people under them will have to follow the rules. And you're never going to be able to actually decide for yourself. You are going to have a God over you, whether it's God, the, the enemy, or some person. And so it is a deception that the rulers, the leaders say, oh, we the people, for the people, by the people. It was That's a lie. It was just to get you to give your energy, your prayers, your work, your money, your time and your effort into advancing their goals. And so they are going to continue to advance their goals. They are going to restructure the world. The Lord spoke to me um, and said, and this was when my dad was preaching, and sometimes when he speaks that powerfully, I'll go deaf for a brief second, and I would hear him very clear. And he said, I'm letting them build it. And I'm like, okay. And then he gave me the understanding, or he gave me like, you know, just the picture in my head and kind of a very vague, you know, it's like seeing through a glass dimly. It really is like seeing through a, through a glass dimly. And just very briefly, 
and the word, you know, the Tower of Babel. And I said, oh, yeah. He, he, didn't, he didn't knock it down at floor number one, floor number two, floor number four, floor number eight, floor number 12, floor, floor number 16. He didn't knock, He let them build it all the way up until they were getting ready to basically put the capstone, which is this. Once again, think of the obelisks and how there's like a pyramid shape at the top that we're going to put the capstone. And then he said, no, because Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Look up that word cornerstone. It is the word capstone. The stone the builders rejected. Who are the builders? You have the Bilderbergs. You have the Masons. You have, you know, the builders. They reject Jesus the Christ, and he's the chief capstone. And so he's going to let them build it. And this is the word they're going to be, they're, they're restructuring, and they're going to start to see it manifest in the physical realm. We're going to see it manifest in the physical realm, and God is going to knock it down. He's going to destroy it with fire from his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. With that being said, now will be a great time for you to get on your knees and pray and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to forgive you of all of your sins. Understand that he is the only way to heaven. He is the only begotten son of the true and living God. And without him, without him shedding his blood, there would be no forgiveness for sins. There is no works you can do to get into heaven. He did the work and he finished it on the cross. You have to accept that reality and confess that reality out of your mouth. Ask God to reveal himself to you and he will. Ask him to come into your heart and to help you to live according to his will and to his ways. And of course, there's Bibles. Praise God, we still have Bibles for the time being. It would be a great, 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 great time for you to throw your TVs away <laughs> and really, really, really read your Bible so that you can learn more about how to live a life that is pleasing to God so that when the Lord comes to take us away in 2016, you can come with us. Okay, God bless you.